Hello, this is a presentation on Oracle BPM Suite 12C Quick Start Installation. My name is Heidi Bulow and I'm a product manager in the BPM Suite team. The Oracle, the uh, 12C Quick Start Installation is probably one of the very first things that you're going to encounter in our new release 12C. Okay, so what do we mean by BPM Quick Start Installation? First of all, I want to point out that this is new for 12C. And if you've used our previous product, you know that you can't run with the integrated server. So JDeveloper has a server that's integrated. It's very useful for when you're doing application integration. That does not include BPM or SOA. So now you can use the integrated server that's built into the, B into the BPM Studio. We also call that JDeveloper, right? Um, it's a single click installation. So it's very quick. It's a quick start installation. Single click, um, you basically say where you want to install, what, where your Oracle home should be, and you say go. You get everything. Everything um, required for development or evaluation with uh, BPM Suite, right? And you can basically, because it's so quick, you can get started quickly. And that's the whole point. It's very easy to use, and it's very quick. I can't say that enough. Some, there are some limitations. So we're going to talk about the limitations on the following slides. Studio is automatically included by default. That means that you do not have to um, do any extra steps to get the BPM and the SOA J developer extensions. It's pre-configured automatically. You get a lazy load of extension functionality. So the extensions that are in the template are only actually loaded when you first start using that functionality. So it's very quick startup. And then as you start using the extra extension functionality gets added. The integrated server that is default configuration is available immediately. You don't have to do any additional installation steps. It's a, a WebLogic server, and it's pre-configured uh, for your use. It includes SOA and BPM functionality by default. Uh, the domain creation is automatic the very first time you start to run the integrated server. And this is a single admin server configuration. So the SOA and the BPM and all, all the, there's no additional managed servers that you would have in a full production installation. So here are the limitations. There are the, Integrated server and this default configuration is using a Java DB and not an Oracle DB. But some of the components don't run in Java DB. So what you would do in that case is you would create a domain outside of JDeveloper and point it to an Oracle database. Um, there are some separate installers that are not included in this package by default as well. So that's another limitation. And you would just run separate installers for those. So those components that um, have issues with the Java DB or have a separate installer are listed here, be it, uh, business activity monitoring, enterprise scheduler, managed file transfer, B2B, B2B healthcare, and event processing. Some of these things are obviously SOA, uh, not BPM, but you may encounter uh, them in your BPM development. OK, quick start install options. Now, we already said that there are no options. You just do a single click, and you go ahead and install. But if you want some options, then you can go ahead and do that. So we have default. We talked about that. That's the one. These are the terms that you want to remember. Default, standalone, and compact. So by default, you get an integrated server, and it uses the Java DB. So the Java DB is um, a, a compact DB database that gets installed automatically and configured. It's easiest to install, and it's a single wizard for everything, basically a single click for everything. Um, the standalone is the same configuration as the default configuration. Okay, these are the same, but the, the domain is, is outside of JDeveloper. So that's the important step. It still uses the Java DB. After you've done your quick start install, you just run an additional script. That's the only additional thing you have to do. Compact, again, it's, it's a single server, admin and server. Uh, the big difference is that it's using Oracle database. So after you've done your quick start install, then you run the config script. It's called config.command. Okay, so let's talk about the first one. So it's, 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 it's value or it's high you know, regard is that it's quick and it's easy. It's very, very good for evaluation purposes because you don't have to know it very much about anything. It's also convenient for demos because, well, first, it's quick to install single wizard we talked about. There are no configuration steps at all. The integrated server shuts down when you exit JDeveloper. So they're, they're, they run together and they're, um, they go hand in hand. So that's demos and evaluations that tend to be the correct thing that you want to do. The standalone domain is the same configuration, 
but it's outside of JDeveloper. So it's a good option for developers. Um, it runs separately. The, the server runs separately from JDeveloper. And I've switched my terminology from BPM Studio to JDeveloper just because um, we're talking more about the innards of how these things work. But JDeveloper and BPM Studio are uh, synonymous. So admin server runs separately from JDeveloper. That means that you can restart one or the other independent of the other. And for example, if you want to just you know, install JDeveloper and then do everything in BPM Com Composer and you don't need JDeveloper running at all, then just shut it down. Your server will still be running. You can do all your work in Composer, which is basically what we um, expect a lot of people to do, just end-to-end -end development using Composer. That's very convenient. And likewise, you can turn your, take your server down if you want to use BPM Studio and just do development in BPM Studio. So you don't have to you know, have your machine uh, vying for resources for something that you don't even need to run. So the compact domain, it's uh, basically the same configuration. It's a single server, but we're pointing to the Oracle database instead of the Java DB. Okay? Um, you only need to do this if you want to use uh, some of the components that are incompatible with Java DB. Um, so these are the, th the few that are incompatible. Uh, enterprise ske scheduler, managed file transfer, B2B, B2B healthcare, or BAM. These all require an Oracle database. Um, and again, just reiterating that everything is configured on the admin server. OK, so the, after you've decided which one you want to do, then you go ahead and do the install. This is how you do the quick start for the default configuration. You set your Java environment, and you run the installer. That's all you have to do. So the first step is to set Java home, wherever your Java home lives. And this should, the, the environment variable has to be all caps for some odd reason. Um, then you check your version. You want to say Java hyphen version. Make sure that you're pointing to a, a 1.7 version of Java. And then uh, that, you know, that that's the one on the path that it finds. And then this is the command, Java minus jar, and then the, the name of the jar file. There's actually, you may have more than one jar, jar file when you unzip your, your, configure, your download. But you just point it to start with the first one, and it will find any additional ones that it needs. And then the wizard comes up. You specify your installation location. And basically, you say next, and it installs, and you're done. When you want to start the server, so you bring up JDeveloper. When you start the server to create your domain, you, you uh, use the menu, the run menu, and say start server instance. And your server will create the domain and start up until it's finally ready and accepting SOA requests. So that's pretty easy. Basically, one step, you know, two environment, you know, an environment variable, a, t a check, and then the jar file. OK, let's talk about standalone installation. So these are the installation steps. They're nearly as easy as the default installation steps. Basically, there's just one more thing to do. So after you've completed the default installation step, you run an additional script that creates your domain outside of JDeveloper. So first, you go to the um, so common bin directory in your Oracle home that was just installed on your previous step. You want to set your templates environment variable. And this tells the config script what um, you want installed. So these are pre-configured templates. And this is the BPM one. Um, and then you run QS config command file script. This, the, uh, the server that you get is exactly the same as the integrated server configuration, except it lives outside of JDeveloper. It's the only difference. And there's a file called QS templates in the same directory, so a common bin that offers you all the list of additional templates that you could specify. Then when you're all done with that, you start the server. It's all automatic. There's nothing else to do. You just specify the location. Then you're ready to start your server. So you go into your domain home bin directory and start WebLogic command file. Everything starts up from there. OK, so finally, uh, the compact option. So here, we won't need to configure an Oracle database. And we do use the RCU utility, and then we configure the domain. So after we do the default installation step, which we did before, we run RCU. This is the repository configuration utility. And then we run the config script to do the domain. So first, we go into Oracle common bin. We execute the rcu.bat file. And then there's a bunch of screens that you want to fill out for specifying the schema, passwords, and things like that. Then you go into the SOA common bin. Uh, you set this en environment variable, the JVM args environment variable that says, this basically says you want to do the compact domain option. And then you run config.command. 
the first dialogue, uh, the, the first part of the dialogue that comes up, it asks you what kind of domain you want to create. You select compact domain, and then you choose your template. So the template will give you a list of templates in the next page of the dialogue, and you just pick BPM and whatever else you want. When you're all done completing this wizard, then you can start your server again the same way as the standalone option, where you go into your domain home bin, and then start WebLogic server, and you know wait for the the uh, the final message that says that the server is accepting requests. So this is not really part of the quick start install demo community setup, but it is the very first thing that everybody wants to do after they've done a uh, an installation, a fresh installation. And so I added it to this presentation just for convenience. So this is basically gives you a set of users for development and evaluation when you want to you know, run applications and log in as people. Um, you don't want to always be using an admin user, which is the only user you get, unless you have done some sort of uh, creation, user creations. This is, a, this is an automatic script. It gives you a set of users that have titles and groups, and there's a management chain, and it's very convenient for doing samples, or doing demos, or doing evaluation. So there's a, in our, in our samples directory, um, and this is, happens to live in the SOA one, there's a, a sample called Workflow 101, or 001 Demo Community Seed. And this is for seeding the demo community. So you get the zip file, you unzip it. Inside the zip file, there's a file called SOA Test Demo App Ear. So that's an ear file, which is an application. So you go to WebLogic Server Console, you install that, that ear file. And once it's installed, then you go into your browser and, um, and run the servlet. Servlet comes up, there's a submit button, and you submit. So what do you get when you run the demo community seed? OK, so here's the actual demo community that you get when you've seeded the demo community with that ear file. Uh, you can see it's a hierarchy of, of people. Um, we have C. Dickens at the top. He's the CEO. Uh, we have a bunch of people at the bottom, Mark Twain. Uh, John Steinbach is a, ma a manager. Uh, these um, individuals have uh, parts of groups, and they have titles. And it makes it very nice to, uh, when you're creating applications or you know, testing applications or, or doing uh, demos or evaluation, and all of these reasons, you want to have a demo community. It's the very first thing that you do after you finish installing in nearly every single case. If you did not see the demo community, the only user you would have is a WebLogic user admin administrator. And sometimes you just don't want to do everything under an administrator login. So go ahead and you know, log in as Jane and uh, start your sample uh, evaluation. So uh, here's where you go to get more information. Um, I'm sure we will be talking a lot about 12 in the blog in the coming soon. And uh, uh, Twitter, of course, and all of these other feeds. So if you want to get to know us better, then please uh, take a look at our, our uh, feeds. And thanks very much. <laughs>